The first ever human interface guidelines published by Apple dates all the way back to 1987. Even though technology has advanced exponentially since then, many design principles still stay consistent since the inception of the very first human interface guidelines. The first 17 pages documents the philosophy of design. This included metaphors of the real world, where they talk about using concrete metaphors and make them plain and simple so that users have a set of expectations to apply to computer environments. Direct manipulation. This is where they talk about users want to feel that they are in charge of the computer's activities. C and point. Users rely on recognition, not recall. They shouldn't have to remember anything the computer already knows. And one that still stands true today is consistency. Effective applications are both consistent within themselves and consistent with one another. And the list goes on and most still stand very relevant in today's world in designing digital experiences. Now, if you didn't notice, the famous 10 usability heuristics for user interface design by the Norman Nielsen Group took inspiration from these. Now, on June 7th, 2022, at WWDC, which is the Worldwide Developers Conference. Good morning and welcome to WWDC. Apple launched a redesigned human interface guidelines. This year, there was a focus on a beautifully designed UI to house all the content that comes in light and dark mode, an entirely new classification of guidelines, a detailed breakdown of high level design principles all the way down to low level component guidance, more advanced and intricate search functions of their content, and an expanded documentation and guidelines to be cross-platform and so much more. So we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into this gym. Let's get right into it, guys. Now, with a very quick Google search for Apple Human Interface Guidelines, we'll be brought to this new portal. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is actually the new UI and the light and dark mode. Now, as we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we can see this cute little toggle right here. And this little toggle will allow us to actually toggle between light, dark, and auto. Now auto would obviously be detecting your time zone and it will showcase you a dark mode in the evenings and a light mode during the day. So let's just flick through over to light and we can see that everything, if you didn't notice, these illustrations are actually customized for light and dark mode as well. So if you notice that it's darker for the icons and lighter for the background, and if we go ahead and toggle this to dark mode and scroll back up, you'll notice that it's dark around the background and light for the icons. And obviously this is for really higher contrast for whatever display that you are viewing this website on. So that's a very nice attention to detail from the Apple design team. Now on the left hand side, we've got a bit of a navigation and if we click on any of these core pillars of information, we can see that it's a bit of a toggle over here. Now I do wish that there was a small carrot or little arrow to indicate that these are toggles because they don't really show to me that these are toggle because these links simply feel like links that will take me to a new page and less of a toggle as well. But that is a minor little detail, but I think that would have added that beautiful touch of clarity in terms of the UI. Now, obviously when we open up one of the toggles, I do wanna zoom right in for you guys. And these icons are crisp. These ones are crunchy. As you can see, SVG, definitely zoomable and they really do scale uh, with the device as well. So I do love that attention to detail. These icons also look superb. I do not have anything to say and uh, credit to the icon designers behind these. Now, the second thing I wanna showcase to you guys and talk about, which is new in this redesign, is the What's New tab. Now, clicking on this tab in the top uh, right navigation, you can see that this page is dedicated to all the news, uh, latest news, latest updates for the human interface guidelines. Now, according to Linda Dong, an Apple designer, the team has also included this entire news section to house all the latest news and updates around the human interface guidelines. Now, there are some very meaningful and valuable videos in this repository as well. I watched the design for Arabic and design app experiences with charts and they are informative. They are a little bit slow in terms of communicating the value and the information, 
but that's a bit of the Apple brand. They're staying calm. It's consistent with all the key sp uh, spokesmen, but the value in these videos are quite insightful and it's all for free. So I would highly recommend you guys to take a look at this section over here and maybe even bookmark this page and always stay up to date with the latest, the latest news on the Apple interface guidelines. Now, if you scroll further down, there are also articles and obviously there are resources. Now, it's interesting to see that Figma is not partnered with Apple uh, to have their product uh, showcased over here. I'm not too sure why. Maybe there is a strong partnership with Sketch uh, right now, which sort of hinders their ability to partner with Figma. I don't know what the commercial agreements are, but there is definitely something happening around here, which does show me that, who knows, is Apple trying to keep Figma out of this space and trying to own this entire space about interface design with Sketch? I don't know. I'll dig a little bit deeper and I'll keep you guys updated. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is actually the classification of the guidelines. So if we head back into the guidelines, you can see on the left-hand side, the Apple team has now really consolidated all their documentation under six key pillars. We have foundations, we have patterns, we have components, inputs, platforms, and technologies. Now, foundations is the focus of just general design principles. We have patterns, which is the focus on common design patterns. In terms of components, as we click over into components, it's really just best practices around how to utilize components within the OS environment. Now, in terms of inputs, this isn't text inputs, but more about inputs of data. So we can talk about the Apple Pencil and Scribble. We can talk about game controllers, keyboards, pointing devices, remotes, anything, as you can see, any device that is inputting data into an interface. That is what this classification is all about. Then we have platforms, which really is a very nice consolidated way around all the different operating systems into one place. I think if you are designing for, for example, iOS and for example, iPad OS, you have a great consolidation of all the most relevant information that you need all in one place. I think this is a great way for us to stay up to date and also be able to find really important information that's relevant to us. Then we also have technologies and this is really a consolidation and a well-classified repository of all the information that we need to understand how to utilize their services when designing for applications. Now, if you tap or click into any of these guidelines, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, past all the content, Apple has now also provided us a great sort of consolidation of relevant resources. So anything that's related to CarPlay in terms of videos, articles, or other information in other guidelines, they will be placed in here in this section so you can find all the relevant resources or information to help you design better experiences all in one place. Now, another great addition to the HIG, which is the Human Interface Guidelines, is the ability to search. Now, if we scroll all the way up to the top of the page, there's a search icon up here, but if you tap that, we can now select this toggle and it says only search within human interface guidelines. So if I am looking for anything related to inputs, for example, you will notice that it will bring up anything that's related to an input that's only within the human interface guidelines and not the entire website or developer section of this website. So as you can see, it brings up steppers, which is a form of input. But if we're looking for text inputs or text fields, they've also got it here as well. So if you click right into that, you'll notice that it brings us right into exactly where we need and it brings up all the most relevant information for us in terms of best practices, how to utilize inputs and text inputs, platform considerations if we're designing for iOS, iPad, Mac OS and whatnot. And at the bottom, once again, we have relevant resources in terms of things are related to inputs and also developer documentation as well. So they're really thinking about how to make this information more accessible. And I do think that they are taking inspiration from material design. Material design has always been a bit of the authoritative. They've always, always had a very concise, very well-designed documentation for all their design language. And I think Apple is actually taking some inspiration from them. Now, the last addition, which has been a really good addition, which I wanna bring attention back onto, is the actual cross-platform uh, documentation as well. As you click onto uh, platforms over here, designing for iOS, 
They bring through all the best practices, everything that should be relevant in terms of designing for iOS all in one place. It was quite hard to find this information previously. It was scattered across all the different uh, components and uh, patterns and foundations, but it's great to now have a very concise documentation for individual and different OS platforms because there is a bit of a nuance depending on what OS you are designing for. So obviously, if you're designing for TV OS, you have so much more real estate, some of those best practices are going to be different for designing for a mobile, which was the iOS. So the overall redesign of the Apple human interface guidelines has been phenomenal. I really love the attention to a detail. However, the things that I would love to have seen would have been the attention to detail in terms of the interface for these uh, toggles, maybe a little visual cue to indicate that these are toggles. In terms of the illustrations, if we head back to what's new, or sorry, if we head back to the guidelines, I didn't really, I don't really see Apple utilizing these really thick strokes for their icons. They've always been quite concise, quite thin, and a little bit more premium. The actual visual language might be evolving a little bit, so they are going for a little bit more of a cutesy look for their icons. But I have always seen Apple to be sort of on the higher end, more crisp, more concise lines, um, a little bit more sleek, if you will. But I guess brands always have to evolve and they always have to change and, and also adapt. So it's nice to see a, a bit of a refresh and a, a bit of a new look for Apple. But aside from that, I genuinely believe this is a step up in terms of the human interface guidelines. The ability to search is now so much more efficient and it can help us actually uncover and discover more information, more relevant information to help us make better decisions when we're designing for these specific platforms. So let me know in the comments below, did you like or dislike the new human interface guidelines? Let me know in the comments below and I will see you guys in another video very soon.